Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy. This is our ninth video in our index laws series. We're looking at another application of index laws by talking about significant figures. Now, I hope you've watched the previous video on all of the rules for significant figures. Now we're going to get into some worked examples and a little bit of practice and a chance for you to practice what you've learned. Okay, let's do a little bit of practice. Let's test our knowledge of those significant figures are a little bit more now that we know the rules. So here's where you can pause the video and I'll give you a moment to pause it and you can see if you can get the answer right. So have a look at this number, 4,361. How many significant figures are in that number? And yes, there are four. Four, three, six, one, all non-zero. So they are all significant, four significant figures. If I was asked to round this to one significant figure, I count from the left to the right, four is my first significant figure and I'm asked to round to that level, which means all these numbers at the back become zeros. It just becomes 4,000. Okay, what about this one? 8,052, how many significant figures are in this number? And yes, you're correct, it's four as well. Zeros between numbers are significant. So one, two, three, four. So if I asked you to round to one significant figure, I'm looking at this first digit here, counting from left to right, everything else becomes a zero. So that means this becomes just 8,000. However, if I asked you to round to two significant figures, that means my rounding starts <clears throat> First significant figure, second significant figure. And this is where it gets a little tricky because I can't just round this to 8,000. I have to round this one up to 8,100 because my normal rounding rules apply. I'm rounding to this level, the second significant figure, which means I look to the right and that tells me to round it to 8,100. Okay, how many significant figures are in this number? Have a little looky-loo. And yes, remember, leading zeros are not significant. One, two, three, these are my first significant figures. So what that means if I'm asked to round two significant figures, I come across, I'm not gonna round it off here, I'm rounding it off at this level, 0 0.00075. That's my second significant figure. The nine tells me to round that up to a five. If I was asked to round to one significant figure, counting from the left, these zeros don't disappear, okay? They don't disappear, they just stay as zeros. My first significant figure is a seven, and so everything after the seven is turned into a zero, chopped off. So I've got one significant figure left. How many significant figures are in this number? Okay, so you will remember leading zeros, not significant. However, zeros between numbers are significant. So one, two, three, four. So rounding to one significant figure, I look to the right and that tells me I need to round the four up to a five. So it rounds to 0 0.5. If I'm asked to round to two significant figures, I count from the left, first significant figure, second significant figure, 0 0.48. If I'm asked to round to three significant figures, one, two, three, I look to the right, I round this up to a one. Okay, what about this number? How many significant figures are there here? Correct, there are two. One, two. Remember, trailing zeros, unless there's a decimal point, are not significant. So there's only two significant figures in this number, 22. So rounding to one significant figure, that would round to 200. Rounding to two significant figures, it stays as 220. How many significant figures are in this number? And there are five. So once again, those leading zeros, not significant. One, zero between two non-zeros is significant. Three, Zero between two non-zeros, also significant, four and five. So rounding to one significant finger, I'm gonna chop it off as 0 0.06. Rounding to two significant figures, 0 0.60. Rounding to three significant figures, 0 0.0603, and so on. Okay, let's look at a couple of worked examples now, because you might be wondering, what's this got to do with scientific notation? Let's do some scientific notation hand in hand 
with significant figures. So this one here is telling us to write 242,300 using scientific notation and three significant figures. Now, first step, put it into scientific notation first. So let's do that by putting on our decimal point on the end of the number 242,300. And remember, because we've got a big number, we're gonna be taking that back from our previous video, that decimal point will move to here. So we'll have only one digit on front and it'll move to back here. So let's count the number of moves back. One, two, three, four, five. We've got five moves back of the decimal place. So we've counted back between two and the four and our new number becomes 2.423 times 10 to the power of five because um, it was five moves backwards. Always do a little logic check. It's a big number, so it should have a positive power. So now that I've put it into scientific notation, in this case, leave all the numbers on. Now we're going to do the rounding part, which is the three significant figures. And this is where we count from left to right. So I'm going to start here and look at these four digits. I've got four significant figures here. I could have seen that up here as well. Four significant figures. I only want three. So that three at the end gets chopped off and it becomes just 2.42 times 10 to the power of five. This number here is what gets rounded with the significance figures, the 2.42, one, two, three significant figures at the end. Let's have a look at another worked example. Um, we need to write the number 0 0.0001010 using scientific notation and using two significant figures. Now, let's not worry about the sig figs just yet. Let's just get it into scientific notation first. So what we're going to remember is this is a very small number. We're going to have a negative power this time, and we're going to be moving that decimal point to the right. So let's do that together. One, two, three, four, five, four positions there. So remember, it's got to go after the first non-zero. So one, two, three, four means I'm going to have a power of negative four. I'm going to write that as 1.010 times 10 to the negative four. Leave all those numbers on. Now I've got to work out where my sig figs are. So I've got to count from left to right again. And I'm going to count that that first one is significant. And this is a zero between non-zeros. So it's also significant. So one, two significant figures becomes 1.0 times 10 to the negative four. Everything after the decimal point gets chopped off because they become zeros. Remember I said that anything that gets changed with, with significant figures becomes a zero. And we know that any zeros after the decimal point, those trailing zeros after a decimal point, disappear. Well, did you find this video helpful? I sure hope so. I sure help, hope it helps with your future rounding endeavors in mathematics. And here are some ways that you can engage further with us if you found it helpful. Firstly, you could like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you always know when our next video is ready to watch. And we've got some in the future that you're not going to want to miss. You could share this video with a friend, a teacher, family member, um, or even tell us in the comments. I love to hear your feedback. And why not follow us on Instagram and Facebook? That's a great way to stay part of the community, watch tips, tricks, and memes in the future. If you've got any questions at all about anything you've seen in this video, or you want some help with a little bit of that sig figs and rounding, here we are, McClutchy Mass at yahoo.com, best place to reach me. Um, writing in the comments can be a little bit awkward. There's space limitations, it's hard to explain things, but getting on the email, much easier. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day.